Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Today, in a Black History Month special, we spend the hour with the award-winning author Walter Mosley. He's published 37 books, though written many others, including a series of best-selling mysteries featuring the private investigator Easy Rollins. The first novel in this series, set in 1948, called Devil in a Blue Dress, was made into a film starring Denzel Washington. Mosley has been hailed for his use of the popular detective novel as a vehicle for confronting racism across multiple decades. But he's less known for his nonfiction works that address the pressing political issues of our time. He wrote What Next, a memoir toward world peace, covering the U.S. war on terror for an African-American audience. Mosley's writing has spanned many genres, from young adult to science fiction. He's written for TV, for theater and film. His honors include an O. Henry Award, a Grammy, and PEN America's Lifetime Achievement Award. Walter Mosley's latest novel, All I Did Was Shoot My Man, follows the modern-day private eye Leonid McGill as he navigates a world filled with corporate wealth, armed assassins and family drama. Last week, I sat down with Walter Mosley and began by asking him to talk about his most recent work of nonfiction, Twelve Steps Toward Political Revelation. The book starts on a deeply personal note, then expands to a call of action for people to organize against wealth inequality. You know, I think that, that people are, are are addicted to their own oppressor, like people are addicted to alcohol or tobacco or opium or whatever. It's the same kind of thing. And how do you wean yourself off of uh, something that's so deleterious to your uh, emotional health and physical and uh, spiritual health? So how do you wean yourself off it? Well, you know, the, the book is an int for me. It was interesting to when I, when I put it together. I I give 12 steps. You know, I talk about education. I talk about understanding what cost is. I, you know, I try to talk about all the various things. I talk about psychoanalysis. But, but I don't do it to say, well, you need to do these things. What I, what I do is say is, well, you need to think about these things and see if they're your steps, if the issues I'm bringing up make sense, and if they're your steps, we'll take them. And if they're not your steps, well, then you need to come up with your steps and, 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 and make those. I mean, it, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, a monograph. So what I want to do is open a discussion. I don't want to, you know, start telling people this is how the world is structured. But I say, well, well, let's let's talk because I think that's the biggest problem we have. People don't talk. Tell me the joke you told me just before we went on air. Oh, it was a it was a a, a, a joke I saw on a, a documentary uh, at Sundance a few years ago. Uh, a, a guy who works on this uh, a sh a ship, this luxury ship in in China, goes goes down the river saying that. Uh, there's a limousine driving down the highway. Uh, the President of the United States, the Premier of China, are in the back seat. Uh, they get to a fork in the road. To the left is socialism, to the right is capitalism. The driver says, Which way should I go? The American President says immediately, To the right, capitalism. And the, 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 the Chinese Premier takes more time. He looks, he thinks, he considers, he says, Yes, that is the right direction. But put on the left blinker. <laughs> I thought it was a wonderful joke, and it's, you know— Is President Obama the left blinker? Uh, you know, that, that could—you know, I don't—well, that's an interesting question, because I think that a lot of people think so. That, that but that and also they think he intends to turn to the left. I don't. I don't think that he has a left blinker on, and I don't think he intends to, intends to turn to the left. I think he's you know he's the American president. He's saying let's go to the right. Uh, but a lot of people. I, I know when I was in um, Arizona, there was a lot of you know Commissar Obama, Premier of the USSA, you know kind of bumper stickers on cars and stuff. You know he's a very middle of the road guy. Does middle of the road things. You know. I mean you could only elect a president like that. I mean I would I would want to elect somebody who's much more to the left, but that's not going to happen in the United States. Hmm. You know. Twelve Steps to Recovery, the idea of your book, Twelve Steps Toward Political Revelation. Um, that's a metaphor in your own life that's been very important. You talk about your addiction yeah, well, to— Yeah, I was uh, really like an alcoholic, and I, you know, I, I guess there's no word for somebody who's addicted to cigarettes, but, you know, I smoked all the time and drank all the time, and, and I—, I I realized that I was like kind of killing myself uh, with that involvement, and that I had to stop, or I was going to die. I, I I I I realized that that you know the 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 connection is that we're we're addicted to these these habits that we have, the 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 way that we think, the things that we do, what we're relying upon, like you know like cars or uh, fast food or whatever it is, and that. 
And it, it, it's, it's better to look at, at our relationship to, to, to the government and to the society as an addiction, uh, because that's truly what it is. And if we can pull ourselves away from that, if we can take a couple of steps back and wean ourselves from things that we think are necessary and that aren't, then we can begin to make changes in our life and also in, in this you know, crazy world that we're living in. Mm. Talk about your latest novel, um, All I Did Was Shoot My Man. Well, you know, the, the Leonid McGill series is interesting. The Easy Rollins, when I started writing Easy Rollins, which is the first character I ever really wrote about, uh, I, I was trying to talk about my father's generation, you know, black men and women who moved from the Deep South to different parts of the world, but this is to California, uh, who've had made a big impact but weren't part of the literature. I just wanted to say, well, here, here's these wonderful stories about these these people who've moved here and who make a big difference here. Let's let's include them in, in the literature. Uh, and I wrote about that for a long time. I, I intend to write another easy novel next year, but but the so he's not dead. No, he's not dead. But the, but the problem is is that. It, we moved into the 21st century. My understanding of the 21st century is this. In the 20th century, I, I go to Detroit and I say, a young black man, I say, well, what's happening, man? He said, well, you know, it's hard on a brother in Detroit. And I say, hey, I know what you're talking about. In the 21st century, I go to Detroit, see a young black man, I say, well, how's it going? He said, well, you know, it's hard on a brother in Detroit. And I said, hey, I know what you're talking about. But you know something, man? There's somebody in Kandahar right now who would be happy to do an apartment swap with either one of us. Right? We're in an international world. We've entered the uh, an international arena where we're kind of isolationist 20th century and before. You know, every time we go out and fight a war. But now we're actually really involved, really dependent upon the rest of the world. Leonid is a guy who, in the 20th century, committed all these crimes. He was a criminal. He did all these awful things. And now, in the 21st century, he realized that he was wrong. And now he's trying to do what's right. And doing what's right is incredibly difficult for him, you know, because he's Everybody knows him as this bad guy, uh, the police, the criminals, everybody else. Uh, and also, everything he knows has to do with this criminal life he lived. And so, for me, it's an incredibly political novel, though I never overtly talk about politics at all. I just talk about this guy who was one way in the 20th century and he's another way in the 21st. So you don't talk about politics? Leonid McGill, how did you get his well, name? Well, you know, his father was a, uh, an anarchist who mistakenly thought he was a communist, who was uh, involved in, um, in, a, uh, you know, in, in all kinds of political movements. He goes down to South America uh, to fight in the revolution and, and never comes back. Uh, Leonid's uh, mother, he's, you know, trained Leonid at home till the age of 12, you know. At the age of 12, he's reading Hegel, you know, he's, he's reading Emma Goldman, uh, and, and he knows that stuff. He knows it even still today. Uh, but his mother dies, his father's gone, he lives on the street, he becomes a criminal. He uses this knowledge uh, to inform his criminal life rather than to inform any kind of political life. How'd you get the title? All I did was oh, shoot I, I my man. You know, the, the, you know it's all that thing. You know, one of the most interesting things in, in, uh, that you can do in literature, I find in America today, is just turn sexism around, and it works perfectly fine. You know, there's the blues song uh, from the mid twenties, the, uh, the the mid twentieth century. Uh, they had me here in Clarksville jail. All I did was shoot my wife. You know, you can't use that title. But I just turned around. All I did was shoot my man. It works perfectly. Award-winning author Walter Mosley, his latest novel, All I Did Was Shoot My Man. When we come back, Walter Mosley, the son of an African-American father and Jewish mother, talks about his upbringing and also growing up in Watts in Los Angeles. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.